Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to the case of the Golden Idol. In the last episode, we completed Chapter 4. We saw how Lazarus Hust, using Dr. James Turner and General Alistair Cock, managed to assassinate a prime ministerial candidate, framing the other and thus leaving him with no opposition to becoming the PM of the United Kingdom. I just... I mean, this chapter is called The New Order. I think it's pretty clear that Lazarus has... He has enacted change. We know that as Edmund, he had very strong views on society, and it seems that with his new order party he may have enacted those changes i am i'm so excited we're getting really close to the end of this game and i am so intrigued to see how it ends either way let's make a start on book 10. the triumph of order Ooh, i'm loving the music okay well hello it's david goran again Poor bugger, I've never seen so much merit removed in the tribunal. Some mistakes are very costly. An Albion Frank banknote. Citizen, Mr. David Goran, I, I can't select your name. Okay, Citizen, Mr. David Goran, birth year 1752, occupation, enforcer of the order party, history of infraction and obedience had a secret compartment in his office locker, denied the existence of the secret compartment, but as a plus, loyal service in low ranking position to the order party, plus 10 merit. His total merit is plus eight. Okay. The man is not breathing, no apparent wounds. So I, maybe just drop down dead. I, Prince of Dusk, like night, I am dark and full of terror. I do not feel love. I do not make that error. When you know my name, just look for my face. Hmm. Okay. It is a thing of beauty to see order prevail. If it were not against the first virtue, I would feel very happy. Nicholas. Yeah, this is Nicholas Maker. I recognized his face. Nicholas. I'll wager you feel the new regime rewards your diligence now. So tell me why I saw you spend more than three shillings on new clothes after I asked you to lend me money and you said you had none to spare. I suggest you lend me some now unless you want me to write up an official report about a fourth virtue breach. Your beloved brother, okay. So in this new regime, there's... There are a number of virtues. Yet we've seen a first and fourth. So I presume there are also a second and third. Um, so we have a number of virtues that you have to... You have to abide by. And it's becoming... You know, oh, you... I asked to lend... Excuse me. I asked you to lend me some money. You said you had none. And then I spotted you spending three shillings. So if, if you don't give me money, I'm going to write this up as an, uh, you know, an official fourth virtue breach. It's become very, um, very tattletale. I, ooh. Hmm. Citizen, Mr. Nicholas Maker, birth year 1755, uh, 57, excuse me, occupation, record keeper of the order party, history of infraction and obedience, labelled a protocol as being on Thursday, even though it was Wednesday, damn, took a double length lunch break in the office, plus loyal service in low ranking position to the order party, plus 10 merit, total merit, plus four, okay. I felt it in my bones that I should have drunk less. Now we poor souls experience God's wrath. Yeah, because this, this guy has an idol that can do, that can perform miracles. They must think Jesus, like, you know, he he can make fire with his hands. You know, he's, he's some kind of wizard. 
This tribunal is a farce. They spread lies that my pure love is merely lust. And what do they even know about true art? Okay. Such a relief that they decided not to push any fashion charges. I hope the process is not painful. That is an interesting sentence. That is a very interesting sentence. Weekly order party of People's Tribunal, number 42. March 14th, 1795. Six culprits are brought to the tribunal. 12, 12 o'clock, tribunal is opened. 12.15, each culprit's charges are evaluated and merit changes are calculated. Uh, 10 past 3, first culprit's merits extraction... Exaction, there we go. First culprit's merit exaction starts. At 20 past 3, second culprit's merit exaction starts. And then at 35 minutes past 3, third culprit's merit exaction starts. Okay. Okay. Remember the third virtue. Don't dress like a hoe? I- okay. Remember the second virtue. Don't be lazy. This is someone sleeping at the job. Hmm. Okay. Oh, hello. This is music to my ears, Alistair, but do control your emotions. We, as arbiters of order, must never violate the first virtue. A bunch of Albion Frank banknotes. Citizen, Dr. James Turner, birth year 1747, occupation, arbiter of the order party. History of infraction and obedience. Drank a full bottle of brandy at a picnic. Kept the book Legacy of the Rose Dynasty in his study. And then, as a plus point, loyal service to the order party in high ranking position, plus 20 merit. So if you're in a low ranking position, you only get plus 10. And so that left him with plus 12. Okay. Dear Dr. Turner, I must regretfully inform you that during your absence from party business, your senior assistant Daniel has demonstrated extreme untidiness and thus breached one of the virtues, junior assistant Toby. Okay. What are you insinuating, James? I would never breach the fourth virtue. You know damn well that I keep no secrets. A bunch of Albion Frank banknotes. Citizen, Lord Alistair Cock, birth year 1745, occupation arbiter of the order party, history of infraction and obedience, slapped a sergeant in anger, listened to marching music in his manner. So because he was listening to a specific type of music in his own house, that counts as an infraction. And then as a plus point, loyal service to the order party in high ranking position, plus 20 merit, that leaves him with plus 11. Okay. Dear Arbiter Cock, I am writing to inform you that our regiment's colonel was seen with another officer's wife in a potentially intimate situation. We implore you to send your agents to investigate this potential flouting of the first virtue. Ooh. Okay. Walter Keane, Lothar Richards. This was, um, I think she was called Mary. This was, this was the, Peter Batley. Peter Batley in his letter. You're too old to date this lady. I'll bang her instead. Also, uncle, can you send me some money after I just insulted your virility? I, yeah, Lothar Richards was the father of the woman that Edmund had an interest in. And Gideon Bell. Hello, okay. This clue has been added to the thinking panel. So culprit, Mr. Fangle Quinn, birth year 1760. And we have some art that has been censored. Charges, claimed he had no wife, has a painting depicting a naked person in his house, broke his wife's favorite teapot in anger, was observed spending a night with the neighbor's wife. Well, I mean, if the neighbor doesn't care, if the neighbor and the wife don't care, if they're all swinging, then I, I, this is, th this has gone too far. 
this this is I love I love that just the picture of the fancy hat culprit Mr. Walter Keane birth year 1758 charges flirted three times with different married women during the party convention wore ridiculous headgear at five public events but he he likes his fancy hats he likes his fancy hats claimed he had not betrayed high arbiter lazarus during his ritual of ascendance expelled from the party of order Here's what I'm thinking. Could the ritual of ascendance have been when he became Griffin reborn? Because we know that McBain was threatening to blackmail Walter, so Walter sent him a letter saying, okay, here's how he did it, but he left out information. I'm wondering, did Lazarus find that letter and say, oh, you've betrayed me. And Walter was saying, but I didn't. I gave him half information. I needed to send him something to get him off my back. So I gave him information that, you know, killed him in the end. And Lazarus was saying, no, 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 I don't care. You sent the letter. You went behind my back. You should have just accepted the blackmail. You should have just accepted being arrested by the police. So I'm, I'm saying you betrayed me. I, ooh. And he's been expelled. Okay. Yeah, culprit, Mr. Lathar Richards, birth year 1735, charges, held a dinner party a few years ago where he offered large amounts of wine to his guests. So we're, we're going back, we're going to charges that are years ago, flipping heck, got angry during the questioning and shouted at the High Arbiter, and then as a plus point, revealed... Oh my god, revealed the whereabouts of his hiding fugitive dissident daughter Mary and her husband Peter, evaluated as plus 15 merit. Oh, uh, Peter got the girl. She liked the picture that he drew her of him fighting a tiger. Look at how this is written. You know, fugitive dissident daughter Mary. She didn't want to touch my old penis. How dare she? And she got with my young nephew who draws pictures of him fighting tigers and is generally quite thick and is therefore lesser than me. I can't believe her. She's a dissident and a fugitive. Edmund. Edmund, she didn't want to bang you. She didn't want to bang you. You were really old at the time. It was not appropriate. Edmund's an incel. Edmund's an old ass incel. Oh my god. Mr. Josh Bailey is the culprit. Birth year 1755. Charges. Left his work at Tannery early. Early, excuse me. Drank excessive amounts of gin at the scrawny cat. Drank excessive amounts of rum at the old oak. Approached a married woman with an indecent offer. Denied four times during questioning that he had done these acts. <laughs> hey. Josh sounds like a player. Good for him. Culprit. Count Horace. Count Horace Webb. Birth year 1750. Charges. Has not held down a job since the new regime. Evaluated as 60 instances of non-work. Claims he works in his castle helping his servants clean it. Possesses 15 books kept in his private library. Oh my god. I'm sorry. I'm so there seems to be a ban on literature and 15 books is considered... Like, that's what you need to call it a library. 15 books. I have way more than 15 books. That is... I do not have a private library. And then as a plus point, expressed his willingness to donate his castle to the party, evaluated as plus 200 merit. So if... If you're rich... If you're rich and can donate a castle, then that'll make up for all of your sins. I... Yeah, this is, this is a really just society you've created here, Edmund. This is a really just and fair society. Culprit, Duke Gideon Bell, birth year 1775. Charges, wears an outrageous hairstyle. His hairstyle was lovely, how dare you. Broke down in tears ten times during the questioning. There also seems to be a thing about, like, you can't have, you know, too much emotion. 
you can't have too much emotion. Like, um, Nicholas. Yeah, I'll come back to that. Nicholas was saying, um, yeah, if it were not against the first virtue, I would feel very happy. So you can't have extreme emotion. Broke down in tears ten times during the questioning. Has refused to start working, evaluated as five instances of job skipping. Rejected the High Arbiter's request that he share information of a secret entrance to the castle of his cousin, the Sovereign. So his cousin is the King or Queen of England. Okay. Why do you want to know this secret entrance? You can't want it for any decent purpose. This has to be nefarious. They're going to assassinate the king or queen. That is like, okay, being prime minister is good. I want to be king. Let's assassinate the, the current monarch. Okay, this club has been added to the thinking panel. Four maxims of virtue. Silence. You will perform your function as much as is required. It is paramount to ensure order in our new society. This was the one that wasn't... No, 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 that wasn't what I wanted. I'm not looking at that. I'm not looking at that. Yeah, and that was increase, increase matter, age, so increase the age of the thing I'm pointing at, the thing that Idol is looking towards. It's currently blue. Okay, I can't remember what the blue was. Um, okay, no, no. Sorry, it's getting rather hot in the room I'm in, and that's... It's causing me to misclick. Blue meant... Okay, if the eye is blue, then you can only perform... Decrease. So he's... So with that, that, he's just increased someone's age. That's what that means. He's just inc- no, Go down, go down. No apparent root. Look at how old he looks. He died of old age, rapid onset old age. That's the punishment. You do too many bad things and you have your life taken away. And that poor bugger, that poor bugger was so badly punished that he became so old that he died instantly. You will perform your function as much as required. And he's he's brandishing. He's brandishing the idol at them. In all truth, Lord High Arbiter, I would prefer storing no more than this. I ca can we... We can't see what's written, but... I would prefer storing no more than this. Silence, you will perform your function as is required. Here's the thing, these, these people all look like children. But if what's going on is what I think is going on, then these aren't children. These are adults who are being used to store... the years. Because... We know, we know how the idol works. You have to fill it and then push out 
whatever you filled it with. You can't fill it and then fill it more. So because it is, it's filled with all of the years that he took off that person, he's now got to put them somewhere. And he's using, these, these aren't children, these are people he is aging and de-aging to store the years. Holy... Edmund, that is fucked up. Edmund, Edmund, your perfect society is fucked up. In all truth, Lord High Arbiter, I would prefer storing no more than this. March 13th, London, at London Gazetteer, this is 1795. Since the year 1792, when it gained a majority in Parliament and liberated our government from multi-party chaos, the Order Party has worked hard to improve society. Despite the vast popular support for the party, His Majesty refuses to acknowledge the authority of the party's tribunal. High Arbiter Lazarus Hust has announced that in two months, the party and its supporters will participate in a peaceful march to the King's current residence to demonstrate their virtue of moderation. Yeah, no. No, they're gonna go and kill him. I am honored to help with the party. Oh, I'm honored to help the party upkeep the four virtues. I only hope sitting here all day does not count as sloth. And then, eh, there are worse jobs than this one. Thank God tobacco is not considered an indulgence. A bit boring though, too bad literature is forbidden and he has Tobacco, a half full pouch of tobacco. Um, I just want to look at something because this kid, he looks very similar, or at least in my mind. Okay, no, this kid had brown hair. Little Pip had brown hair. I mean, here's the thing, if he's... Years will have passed, Pip will have grown up. However, if he's aging and de-aging these people, then theoretically that could have been Little Pip, but no, the hair is too dark. They look similar, but the hair is much too dark. Okay, this clue has been added to the thinking panel. Observe the four virtues to avoid losing merit. Okay, this doesn't really tell me anything, but thank you. Remember the second virtue, store confiscated objects and evidence according to the virtue breach. Okay, in the first one we have a bottle with brown liquid labelled brandy, a bottle with some, with some substance labelled opium. Okay, so the first one is, the first one is like inebriation, I think. In the second one we have invoice, February 15th, 1795, Blackbrook Farm, Three pounds of butter, 25 pence. Delivery, six pence. Total cost, 29 pence. Um, that's an error. That should be 31 pence. So mistakes. Mistakes for the second one. In the third one, we have a violin. Oh. Portrait of Gideon Bell painted by Jasmine Nightwings in 1794. No, no, no. Away. And then... And no, Mona Chamber Pot. Um, so for the third virtue, I guess art and things like that. And then the fourth one, a book titled Stories. A book titled Autumn Tales. Yeah, literature. Literature's been outlawed. Okay, let's, let's take a look at this. I... N no, I can't do math. I don't like math. I'm bad at math. Okay. Okay. Okay, the first virtue is blank. Excessive blank will be punished. The second virtue is uh, work. So th these are all relating to work. Vulgar something. And then the fourth virtue is that. Okay. Oh, Lord. Oh, I'm looking at my time. I've only got about six minutes left. This, this is going to take me much longer than six minutes. Okay, um... Okay, let's see. Um, let 
let's see. We need... Yeah, the third virtue is... Hmm... Okay, the first virtue... They're talking about emotions. Yeah, control your... Yet yeah, we must never violate the first virtue. Okay, no, I think... So this... What are you insinuating, James? I would never breach the fourth virtue. You know damn well I keep no secrets. So he's getting angry. He's getting angry saying, I'd never keep secrets. I'd never break the fourth virtue. And in response, he's saying, that's music to my ears, Alistair. But do control your emotions. You're getting angry. We must never violate the first virtue. Okay. So this is excessive emotions. Has to be one. Okay. I'm things that are virtues. We have beauty, diligence, um, truth. That's a virtue. And I'd argue moderation. But that's the thing, which is which? Um, diligence? Yeah, I'd assume that would be diligence. And then beauty. Yeah, don't don't be looking like a tart. Don't be don't be, you know, mutton dressed as lamb or whatever. You have to you have to be elegant. That that one seems like it's directed at the ladies. You know, you have to appear a certain way. I mm. Um Yeah, I'm, I think that would be diligence. Where was it? Where was it? Beauty is right there. Yeah, that's excessive. So, moderation, and I think this is truth. So, in which case... I think... I think that could be vulgar art. Vulgar fashion. Hmm. Okay, second virtue. M mistakes. The, the scroll had mistakes and sloth. They don't like sloth. And I think you had... I, I think... I think the last one for the second one could be untidiness. Yeah, if you're untidy at your job. Where is it? Where is it? Right there. Okay. Okay. I think probably excessive lust could go there. And his, if that's truth, then that would be lies. And there were, um, there were stories. There were stories in the last... In the last one. And secrets. That would make sense. That would fit. Vulgar music. There we go. And I think in that case... Excessive indulgence? <clears throat> okay. Okay. <laughs> I hate math. I can't do math. I, I, le I legitimately can't do math. I'm crap at it. I am absolutely crap at it. Okay. Okay, you know, I'ma turn my timer off and I'ma whip out my notebook. That's what I'ma do. Okay. So, he made a mistake. 
And I would assume that would be laziness, so... Yeah, he took a double length, so that would be sloth. So these are both diligence. In which case... Let's see, uh... Dil-e-gents. I think that would have to be a minus three. Because that would make six, leaving that at plus four. So he had a secret compartment and then denied the existence, so he lied. He lied and kept secrets. So then that would be truth. So if that's the case, then I think that I think truth is a minus one. I think. Do any of you, okay, you, you don't. Okay. So, drank a full bottle of brandy and kept a book. And that would be a mix, I think. I think that would be a mix of the two. You know what, I'm also gonna write down moderation. And beauty. Okay. Okay. And this guy, so he slapped someone in anger, so he got too angry. And he listened to marching music, and that was... Yeah, music. Okay, so the, these two both have... They've mixed and matched. Okay. Okay. So here's what I'm thinking. He kept a book... That puts it at minus one. In which case, moderation would be minus seven? I can't do math. I can't do math. Okay, so t I'm, I'm holding up my fingers here. I feel so stupid. I can do logic. I can make logical guesses, but you ask me a math question and my brain just goes, no, no, thank you. I do not do this. Okay, so 12 plus one is 13. That would be a seven. Yeah, book, book is literature. Literature is truth. I think truth is only a minus one. So I think moderation is a minus seven. Slapped a sergeant and listened to marching music. So, in which case, that would make music a minus two. If if I've got that right. If so, diligence, I think, is a minus three. Truth, I think, is a minus one. Moderation, minus seven. And beauty, minus two. Okay, but now I have to add. Now I have to add stuff. Okay. Okay. So we have Fangle Quinn. So, okay. Okay, you know, here's what I can do. I can take a picture. I can take a picture of this and then I don't need to keep flipping between these screens. Okay, there we go. Okie doke. 
Okay, so this is... Uh, Frank. Okay, pen, now is not the time for you to die. Pen? Pen, you've got plenty of ink. Fengal Quinn. So he claimed he had no wife, so he lied. So that is a... Minus one. Has a painting depicted a naked person in his house. So that is a minus two. Broke his wife's favourite teapot in anger. So that is emotion. So that is a minus seven. And then was observed spending a night with a neighbour's wife. That would be lust. So another minus seven. I'm, I'm going to calculate these later. I'm just going to write them down for now. And then we have Walter Keen. WK. So flirted three times with different married women. Hold. Now we're... These are three separate charges. Okay, yeah, these were only one-time events. Okay, so... Flipping heck. Oh my god. Walter, you have a lot of charges. Okay, so you flirted three times. Again, I think that would be... My, oh, oh my god, so that is... Minus seven bracket times three wore ridiculous headgear that would be vulgar fashion so that's a minus two bracket five times five and then the last charge is claimed he had not betrayed high up to Lazarus so I I think that would be considered a lie I'm gonna I'm gonna consider that a lie. So minus one, or at least they think it is. Then we have Lathar Richards. So copious amounts of wine, that would be indulgence. So minus seven. Got angry. Again, another indulgence. So again, minus seven. But he revealed where Mary and Peter are, so that is a plus 15. And Josh Bailey. JB. Okay, you left work early. Sloth. Minus three. Drank excessively. Minus seven. Drank excessively again. Minus seven. Approached a married woman with an indecent offer. Again, I would assume that to be minus seven. Flipping heck. And then denied four times during questioning that he had done this act. So, lies. So, minus one times four. Yeah. Okay, Horace Webb. Oh, oh my god, 60 instances of non-work. That's laziness, so we have minus three times 60. Claims he works, that's a lie. So a minus one. Possesses 15 books, so 15 minus ones. But then he gave them a castle. So that's plus 200. Okay, I've ran out of space. I have ran out of space on this page so you know what we're gonna do the math we're gonna do the math here okay so let me pull up my calculator just in case 
just in case. I think I can do the first few pretty easily. So Fangle Quinn, he lost. Uh, okay, so that is 3, 10, 17. So he got negative. 17 merits, but mer merits translates to years. He lost 17 years of his life. Walter Keen. Okay, so that's... Uh, okay, seven... Three... So seven, fourteen, twenty-one. Twenty-one, thirty-one. I think that's thirty-two. Let me just do that math again. So, uh, fourteen, twenty-one, thirty-one, thirty-two. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, Lothar Richards. So that is minus 14, but plus 15. So that would be a... Plus one. So he gained a year. And then Josh Bailey. Flipping heck, Josh. Okay, so that is... Okay. Okay. That's seven times four, I think. Okay, let me just... Seven, fourteen, twenty-one, twenty-eight. I think that's minus twenty-eight. Okay, and then Horace Webb. Okay. So you are at 1560. You know what? Calculator, what is 3 times 60? Because I am lazy. 180, thank you. So that is 180 plus 16. That is 196. But he gave them a castle, so he got plus 4. Okay, and Gideon Bell. GB. And let me pull up that picture again. Okay, there we go. No, 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 can, can we? I would like, I would like it in full, please. Okay, if, oh, fuck it, good enough. Okay, so Gideon wears an outrageous hairstyle, that would be vulgar fashion, so that is a minus two. Broke down in tears, that's excessive emotion. Oh buddy. So that's automatically a minus 70. Seven times ten, yeah, that is minus seventy. Oh, buddy. Has refused to start working, so that is five instances of job skipping. So that is... Three times five would be fifteen. and then rejected the High Arbiter's request that he share information. So that's a secret, so that's a minus one. Oh God! So it just hit me! That's Gideon! It, it, it wasn't that I didn't remember that this guy was Gideon Bell. No, I realised, I realised it was the young man with the bright blue hair. I just... It just didn't strike me. Was he wearing a blue coat? I didn't, I didn't look at his clothes, I'm sorry. No, he's, he's wearing green here. I... This poor young man, he looked so young. 
He looked so young and look at him now. Look what's happened to him. God damn. Yeah, that is four. Okay, so that is... 85, 86, 80, 88. I think that's 88. Oh my god. God damn. I, I feel really badly for him there. I feel so badly for him. Okay, let me just go back to my timer. I'm not using it, but there we go. Okay. Okay. Okay, blank. Blank years have passed. Okay. There was a newspaper. You had it. So they gained power in 92. It's 95, so it's been three years. Three years have passed since Order Party has seized power during a tribunal. God, this poor, this poor young man. During a tribunal, Gideon Bell is judged to have the largest... Where is it? Merit deduction in all tribunal history to execute his punishment... Idol was used? To execute his punishment, Idol was used on him and he lost 88 years and died. The Order Party has seized power and now enforces the four maxims of virtue. The young Duke, Gideon Bell, was judged during the tribunal to have lost 88 merits. The High Arbiter of the Party, Lazarus Hust, used the idol to decrease Gideon's youth by 88 years, thus making him 108, which resulted in his death. Damn. Gideon didn't seem like a bad sort. He didn't seem like a horrible person. He d oh. He seemed a little... God, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I wonder if his interest in the Lemurian was, was a genuine, like, oh, you have a culture that um, I'm interested in, or whether it was just like, a, oh, a foreigner. How interesting, little man. Hello there. Do you speak English? Like, I can't tell whether his interest in Ergin Patu was sincere or whether it was a bit, um... God, what's the word I'm looking for? T talking down. Smug. Superior. There's a word. I can't remember it. But I, I can't tell whether he was sincere or whether he was being a bit smarmy. But he... He didn't seem like a complete arsehole, and this- oh my god. Oh my god, I- I- I feel horrible right now. I'm enjoying myself, I'm enjoying the game, but I just feel absolutely awful for what happened to Gideon there. I- Here's the thing, this- this is the final book. This is the final one. The story has to get wrapped he wrapped up here. Like what? What is gonna happen? What is gonna happen? How does this story end? Well, find out tomorrow, but until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.